All right, um, I showed a photograph of this counter and somebody asked a question. They said that they had a couple of these, but they didn't know how to use them. And I don't think I've showed this on my channel before anyway. In um, um, general terms, I don't recommend you, be, <laughs> you buy one of these things just, just to get that out of the way. Um, the system seems to be a little bit unreliable. Um, there's a top section, a bottom section, they clamshell together. I guess I should just go ahead and show that. Um, so uh, in the back, there's these two levers and you just pull the levers. Let me take off the power cord here. You just pull these two levers out and then uh, the, uh, the top and the bottom separate. All right, so let me, let me see if I can do that on camera here without destroying anything. Um, there we go. Uh, there. Okay. So um, they they go they go in halves. Okay. And there's this big connector that goes between the two of them. Um, like I said, they do seem to be a little unreliable. Um, and the counters are better than the voltmeter. So this 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 particular system that Hewlett Packard did, um, you could buy voltmeters and you could buy um, counters and and other things in this form factor, and um, the voltmeters were quite problematic. I, I pulled quite a few out of the trash can when I worked at HP and uh, a lot of them have custom hybrids in them and they're hard to work on. Anyway, like I said, don't always recommend them. So to turn it on, you, 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 turn this, you turn this knob here and I'll talk about what this knob does. But let's just kind of talk about what, what the counter is. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of ranges for these things. Um, the top and the bottom were separate. The 5300B had a certain number of digits, and then there was another part number, the 3052, I forget. There's another number here that has a lower resolution number of bits. So this is the high-end top unit. It has the most digits. And um, the bottom unit uh, again, there were different versions, different price points and stuff like that. This one's pretty nice. It's the uh, 5305B and this one goes up to 1.3 gigahertz and um, it has one input here that go it goes up to 100 megahertz and then this input goes from 90 megahertz to 1.3 gigahertz. So it has a, a prescaler pre pre in it. Okay, so oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and stick some kind of signal into the thing. I've got 50, 50 megahertz going in. This thing's probably way out of cal. I, I, I use it in my home, my, my, my um, inside uh, office uh, bench setup. And I don't really care how accurate it is. I mean, it's certainly accurate to a whole bunch of decimal places. So it's, it's fine for what I use it for in there. I should probably cal it. But um, so uh, the, Input here, like I said, is zero to 100 megahertz. If you go above 100 megahertz, it's not gonna work. So uh, one mega ohm input. And then this button here tells you what you're gonna do, okay? Um, there is a uh, check button to make sure that uh, it's working and it just counts to 10. Um, a means that you're on the A channel, which is over here. B means you're on the B channel, which is over here. Um, and then there, there is B, but 10 kilohertz maximum. So it gives you extra re resolution. Uh, so we'll just leave it on B. And then uh, you can set the resolution. So how many, how many bits of ac or digits of accuracy do you want? Uh, you, can, you can make it smaller and smaller. So uh, this is much faster though. Um, and then you can get more and more uh, digits of accuracy. So this thing's pretty accurate, right? Okay, I don't need to call it. <laughs> that's 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 way more accurate than I need it to be. Uh, it's perfect right now. So uh, so yeah. So this is how accurate you want to be. You can even go one step further, and it's going to kind of spill off the other side. But you can see it's 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 not even updated yet. You're going to have to wait for the update. There, it just updated. So you can get nine 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 eight. Yes, yeah, so this is perfectly accurate now. All right. So this is this is basically resolution. 
and it has to do also with how fast it's going to be counting, so it's going to be take, take time to get extra resolution. The amount of time is also set by this one. You can slow down how fast it updates with this thing here. Let's, let's go to a place where it's, uh, yeah, so it's kind of flickering. Uh, it's going to be hard to show. But anyway, um, you can set the sample right here. Um, and, uh, oh, here we go. That's how, I, that's how I do it. You press this to clear it, and then it updates. So if you put it way over here and push it. All right, so let's go up to a higher range. Maybe, I can, maybe it's better here. I can, I can show it here. So we can watch it sort of count here. And you can watch that one there if it shows on camera. Yeah, you can watch that and kind of flicker. That's when it's updating. And if I move this knob halfway, you can see that that's slowed down. So now it's sampling slower. And if I turn it all the way to the right, it basically is going to be super, super slow. Okay. So if you kind of want to hang on to a number, it's almost like a hold, a hold feature where you turn this all the way to the right. Okay. And, um, and then if you just want to zero it and make it count again to get a fresh number, you, you can push the button. So anyway, that's how that works. Almost always I just leave it. Um, this is the off position and just one click and you're on. Just leave it there. It's going to be fine. Just leave it there. And then just use this for how many, how many digits you need. Um, okay. Uh, let's move over to this connector here. Okay. So I'm going to move over here. Let me set my frequency to, uh, let's set it, let it set to one gigahertz, one gigahertz. Okay. And then I need to go, this is the A input. So I'll go to the A input and, uh, let's see if we can measure one gigahertz now. And I'm not seeing, uh, any signal. And that's because I have the attenuator set to max. If I Set the attenuator to min. Oh, I'm sorry, it's that way. There we go. Now we're certain. So this is a turn. I thought it was a click click, but it's a turn. So minimum attenuation on the input, maximum attenuation on the input. It couldn't see it. So I, so here on minimum, you can see that we're that we're that we're now counting one gigahertz or a thousand megahertz. Um, and uh, yeah, so there you go. And again, you can let it spill over and get more digits. It, you know, the numbers are still over there somewhere. It's going to take a while to update. It'll take time. It'll do it. There it is. And you get, you get more digits. Okay. So that's about all there is to know about this thing. Uh, there's a connector here uh, that is power. And there was an option you could buy that was a uh, pre-amplifier. So if you're measuring very, very small signals, um, you would plug your pre-amplifier power into that connector, and then you would plug your pre-amplifier into this, and then you would plug this into the pre-amplifier, and it would add more gain. Uh, so that's what that was for. Um, anything else? Uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, when they work, they're great. I really like them. They're nice and small. Uh, so um, it's nice, uh, nice for a lab that doesn't have a lot of room. All right, let's set a fun number. 1.2345678.9 gigahertz. 1.23456 and 7. Yeah, so yeah, pretty good. <laughs>